Immediately after Minder, did you find that people tended to offer you Arthur Daly type stuff? You got sent a bit, but not very much. Um, most times it didn't get past my agent. I mean, she would look at it and tell me, i uh, say, shall I send it to you? And she'd give me an idea about it, and I'd say, no, I don't think so. But um, no, you do, yeah. You did um, a building society ad, in which, which was a version of Arthur Daly, wasn't it? No, it was not. <laughs> um, when I did that, uh, the ITC, or whoever they are, the, the regulator at the, the wardens, time. Yeah. The wardens, yes. Said, um, wrote to my agent and said, George Cole is not to do the Leeds commercial because you mustn't do, he was a character that's on ITV at the time. And I sent back a message saying, that is not Arthur Daly. Arthur Daly wouldn't be seen dead in that sheepskin coat and that flat cap. And still they didn't like the idea. But in the end, we got a very nice note saying, all right, we accept that the Leeds man is a distant relative of Arthur Daly. So I was allowed to do it. Well, I started racing greyhounds now, and this one's no beginner. He hasn't lost a single race, a dead cert money spinner. That's why I call a hairy hound. Did you have to think hard about whether to, to do adverts? Because that is a decision actors have to make. Uh, again, it, it comes down to script. I mean, the first commercial I did was for uh, Hamlet Cigars, and it was one of the best scripts I've ever seen. That's interesting, because um, a lot of people cynically think that actors just do adverts for the money and don't take it very seriously, but you, you took that seriously as a bit of acting. Yes, I, because it was a good script. Uh, and also the, the, the Leeds man. Th these were very good um, sketches of, of this character. And I mean, I think it was um, early rap, actually. And again, it, 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 you, you did uh, two one-minute ones and a 30-second one once a year. It's a week's work. And probably a year's money. I mean, astonishing yes, amounts yes. they pay for. Yes, and you obviously didn't worry about doing things that you didn't want to do. A television series I have fond memories of, but probably few people remember, is Don't Forget to Write um, oh, by yes. Charles Wood. Mm, wonderful. Which was a tremendous series, and uh, most, of the, most of the people I know who are writers um, remember that mm. series very fondly. Mm. Um, that was very, very different from, um, I'd say it's the other end, it's the posh academic end of your um, acting, but you were playing a playwright, a reluctant playwright. Yes. I mean, he... got fed up writing, and he would lock himself in his room, uh, make a tape recording of his typing, and then switch on the tape recorder, and open the window, and go out and do some gardening. Gordon? Want another cup of tea? And when Gwen Watford, the wife, came and listened at the door. All she heard was tip-tap, 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 so she assumed he was working, until she found out. Some of them were quite pretty. The stuff that's come in in recent years, I mean, you were offered, how do you make that judgment as to what to do? It is the script. Yes, if by page five you get up to make a cup of coffee, you're not going to do it. If you don't get up to make a cup of coffee, it's more than likely that you are going to do it. But you can tell at once. Um, I mean, with good writing, you no problem at all. But occasionally you get something that you've seen before, and uh, you don't want to do it. But you're thinking, what, what can I do with this? What can I do with this role? Well, it, no, before that, you're, you're thinking, does this come off the page? And most times it does, um, and you don't have any problem. Uh, I mean, in Charles Wood came off the page like nobody's business, um, and there was no problem at all there. And what was so wonderful was Charles liked 
writing two people talking, and it was good stuff. Um, but some people, when they get that to direct, they give you an awful lot of music over it because they don't think it works. But it did work with Charles, every single script. And as I say, it's rather neglected series that, but I think you were, you were a victim of BBC politics, perhaps. I think we were, yes, because the, um, whoever was responsible um, changed the time of transmission every week, which didn't give it much of a chance. It was, a, it was sad, particularly as people kept saying uh, what a lovely series it was. A lot of the stuff you've done recently, it's Tony Grounds, it is his subject, but has been about class. Um, a lot of the, the dinner party is about that, um, mm. and class apart is about that. As I say, having the two, the range in your, uh, in your background, having changed your voice and so on, that's presumably quite an interesting area for you. Yes, because in a, a class apart, uh, I was granddad, Cockney granddad, and in uh, the dinner party, I was a bit posh, um, and probably the only redeeming feature about the play was my character, because they were really, well, the two young people weren't, they were all right, but the others were monsters. Some people in their later years get depressed, they get angry, they just simply don't like getting older. Have you felt any of that? Uh, no. I mean, I, I don't like the fact that I'm uh, not as nippy on my feet as I used to be. Um, and I've never run anywhere anyway, so that doesn't worry me. Um, no, you, you, you'll get a bit slower, a bit stiff when you get up from the chair, as I will after talking to you. You'll help me out, though, won't you? I will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it doesn't worry me. And I suggested earlier, uh, earlier one of the great things about acting is that you can, you, you can simply keep going. Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still going. I mean, the last thing I did in the theatre, I think, uh, before Party Peace, was um, Heritage at Hampstead, in which I played a Chelsea pensioner. And that was a lovely play. And we went down to um, have lunch at the Royal Hospital. And they're terribly funny because they say, the only ones who leave here leave to get married, which is extraordinary. And they're, they're so uh, full of um, vitality, energy, and, and lovely people to be with. The OBE you got, did that mean a great deal to you? you not a great deal. Um, it was very nice. Um, yeah, it's all right. Um, I think anything like that. I probably I didn't approve of it before I got it. Well, no, I wondered about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I do now. And who, who gave it to you? Her Majesty. And did she say nice little Erna or anything to you when she... No, she said, are you still doing the television work? And I said, yes, Mum, I am. She said, I, I don't see you very much. I'm very busy now. <laughs> you say you wouldn't have approved of it um, before, so you a bit of a lefty, were you? No, I, I just think... I, I don't think it's right for actors to get these awards. I think a sort of people in business and, and inventing and people like that are the ones who really deserve them. But I mean, we get well paid for doing something we like doing. But that, that was nice to have. And it was nice to go to the palace and take the family with me and uh, have the car searched as we went in and be slightly embarrassed because there were two pots of curry that my wife had brought up in the car for our daughter. <laughs> and the police wanted to know what it was. <laughs> Do you have any regrets at all about your acting career? No, none at all. No. Pretty happy position to be in. Yes, very. George Cole, thank you. Thank you. And Mark is talking to prolific drama writer David Renwick at half past 11 on Wednesday night here on BBC Four. Next tonight, a chance to see George Cole in action in Minder.